Good morning, folks. Saturday morning. Very, very busy day ahead. It's mostly going to be at the allotment, but I've just got to show you the chilies. We've got to have a little chili update to start the day. The grocery shelf is looking a bit different, and look at that at the top. <laughs> it's obscene. But I had a wild Friday night last night, absolutely wild, and I've potted a load of my peppers up. You might remember these were potted up. I don't know, maybe around kind of the 5th of February, I think. I'll put a date on the screen if that's not correct. But I could not believe how quickly these things were growing. And a few of them were just starting to flower too. There's a good example just here, a tiny, tiny little flower bud just forming in the middle of the plant there. Now, you don't have to do this, but I prefer to take these off. I really think that helps to stop the plant from going into flowering mode. There's another one just here. Really, we want these plants to all be focusing as much energy as possible into vegetative leaf growth. And oh God, this one does look good, doesn't it? This is my star at the moment. This is a beaver dam plant looking really, really nice. A California wonder here too. They are starting to develop that lovely dark green. And we've got a little bit of new growth on this one already. Just, oh, they just look so, so good. And I love having potted these up into the one litre things. I just think they look so much smarter and they've just got a little bit more room to breathe. I do have a few problems this year that are worth mentioning. You might have noticed already a bit of leaf curl. And this is happening to just a couple of varieties that I've got. My Machu Picchu are the worst, but I've confirmed that that is apparently just a thing with that variety. Ian from Growing Local is growing those two and his have gone just as curly. This is a ring of fire though. And all of my ring of fires are just a little bit curly. Um, I don't think it's anything to panic about. It could be that there's a little bit too much light and it's just trying to shield itself from the light a little bit, or it could be something else. But the fact that when I see it, it's the same variety. So these two back here are ring of fire too. And the fact that it's just happening on a couple of varieties and not, oh, that's another, that's another good looker, isn't it? This one, oh, I think this is the one that I was showing up on the, the live stream, the Heinen Yellow Lantern that I kept holding up the other day in our chili special. But uh, yeah, that's one thing, the leaf curl. The other thing, these three at the front here are my pepper dew plants. And they've had a little bit of funkiness going on, a little bit of kind of slightly deformed growth. The other two aren't too bad, but it's mostly this one. You can see some real kind of funky leaf shape going on. This one's not looking too hot. So only one side of the leaf has grown. And I think this is possibly, there's a few things it could be, but I think this is possibly, it got a little bit too much fertilizer. This is what happens often, I think anyway, when you give your plant too much food and it gets a little bit of root burn and just goes a little bit haywire. I did mention when I was potting these up, there was some clumpy fertilizer. So it might just have a few too many clumps of blood, fish and bone. The other thing, the last thing is edema. And the other thing is edema, which has been really bad on my anteps. My antep acidoma, I think it is. I I'm not sure why in particular. I think I was a little bit um, gentle with the fan. I don't think I had the fan on too much. I think this is mostly caused by airflow. The new growth that's coming in looks really healthy and fine. So, oh, there is a little bit on there, but I have started increasing how often the fan is on. It's off for now, just for noise, but this will be going back on. But I'm just so, so happy. I can't believe how quickly these guys have romped away. I just hope that these guys are going to be okay in the one litre pots until they need to go out, because all of this space down below is rivers reserved for Jess and her, her flowers, which are currently in the kitchen waiting to be potted on. But up here too, you can see that I've actually done this in stages. So the ones that weren't quite ready to be potted on have just been popped up here under a little cheap light. And the main issue with this is just that it's not gonna be as easy to check on them and making sure that they're okay, but they should be okay probably until next weekend when I'll pot those on. And what I'm probably gonna do is set up another light just on the other side here. Um, and it won't be as ideal as this one, but they'll be in one litre pots and they should have enough room up there. We're gonna give it a go. Bit of an experiment with those blue lights. I've never used them before, but it's much better than them not having enough room in their pots. Anyway, wow, wow, God, I can talk about chilies, can't I? <laughs> I hope you're feeling cozy, folks, because I think today is gonna to be a bit of a bumper episode. You know, I've got that feeling. <laughs> I think there's an awful lot to do, and the first thing I need to do, trip to the hardware store. <laughs> okay, slightly off balance. One thing I have learned to do. Oh no, I've kicked the... Oh, I was about to say one thing I've learned to do so smoothly 
is opening the poly tunnel with my feet, but it wasn't very smooth, was it? I've been shopping. I've got lots of goodies. It's lovely and warm in here. Let me just shut the door. I feel nice and cozy because it is a miserable day. So what's in the bags? Well, I'm hoping today is going to be an extremely productive day, although it is somehow already 12 o'clock. The mornings just disappear when you've got to go and run errands and stuff. And we've got some classic Korea code, but for the sleepers this year, well, not this year, but for this round of construction on the greenhouse, I'm going with a bitumen paint, which is pretty much, I think, about the heaviest duty you can get. This, is, this one from Wix is kind of, um, it's a little bit more watery, apparently it's very runny, but it does go on wood quite nicely. So I wouldn't be using this on anything that was in contact with the soil that I was growing in, but for the side that is on the floor that is actually going to be touching the brickwork, I think this will be really good for just completely sealing it out. I'll do it on the bit that's touching the floor, and then if there's enough left in the tin, I'll do it on the bit, the external face as well, which might get wind uh, kind of driving the rain at it. Um, and for the rest, I'll just use this kind of standard Korea coat, which I've used plenty of times before on the channel, and it's, it's okay, you know? What else have we got? Well, <laughs> time for some brushes. Oh no, that's Korea coat everywhere already, classic. We're upgrading the shelf because <laughs> although all the comments on the shelf were really lovely, I did have enough people saying, uh, JB, you should be using battens on the top to spread the load and using something more heavy duty than this wire. So I've just got some chains and some little hooks to kind of link the chain together. And that's probably gonna be my first job. I've also, brought up the chili grow, which I'm excited to trial out this year. And this stuff is a bit more boring, that's just my lunch and some waterproofs because it is foul today. And the other chili grow bits also, oh my God. Oh, clean gloves. <laughs> I've had a couple of pair of gloves kicking around the poly tunnel for ages and they were just starting to, they were getting to that point where, you know, like even after you've, you've washed your hands multiple times, you can still smell the gloves. <laughs> Clean gloves, hurrah, what a treat. Right, let's get the, uh, yeah, so plan for today. I want to first switch up this floating shelf so that it's a bit more robust and I'm not gonna be losing any sleep over it. <laughs> I've been a little bit worried since that video went out, but it's fine, it's all fine. So I'm gonna organize that, then I'm gonna paint up the sleepers, get them all treated, hopefully nice and dry, and then tomorrow, Sunday, I might be able to get the base down for the greenhouse. Fingers crossed, we'll see, no pressure. I'm not putting any pressure on myself because you know, it's a greenhouse build and you know what I'm like. So we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, and then it's sowing time. I'm hoping today, I, do you know, I haven't sown anything. I literally, I've got my chili peppers, my onions. I haven't seen those onions in a long time. <laughs> Let me go and get them. Well, you know what? I'll be damned. They don't look too bad. They're actually quite healthy. I haven't, I haven't seen these in a long time. I think I maybe remembered to water them about 10 days ago. <laughs> these ones at the back, the Red Baron, aren't looking quite so good, but I saw Jessie potting up hers and she gave them a trim and now they look really good. So maybe I'll do that. These are quite multi-sown as well. Just depends how quickly the ground is gonna warm up and that kind of weather at the start of March when I put these out, I think. Not looking too bad. These might be the first thing to to have a new home on the floating shelf, actually, once I've reassembled it, anyway. I've just put these on the hotbed, and just a quick note about this, actually. I had loads of really helpful comments, and one of the main ones was people saying, JB, you need at least a cubic metre of manure and mix to get this hot, and there is more than a cubic metre here. It's actually 1.3 by one metre back, and I didn't go down a metre, but I did go down about 70 centimetres, and then I've built it up on top. So it's not a, a cube shape, but in total, there is over a cubic meter of manure and stuff to cook down in here. It is still quite warm to the touch, but the thermometer itself, only reading about 20, 25. So not great. I think the best thing to do would be to use this as just a little frost-free environment for any cold snaps. So when I'm doing my sowing later today, I'm gonna to be way more ambitious because I can just leave loads of seed trays on here, maybe put a bit of fleece over the top, and I know it's gonna be nice and cozy for my seedlings. So it's not a complete failure. I mean, the original idea was to have this as, you know, growing stuff, but you've got to start it much earlier for, for creating a soil layer on top that you grow into. 
I'm feeling great today, folks. Ah. Perfect. I am very, very happy with this. Now, I haven't battened along the top. I think what people were talking about is just getting a little bit of wood to just kind of evenly distribute the weight across this crop bar a little bit. And what I've done instead, it took me a little while to figure out the best way, but I've just wrapped this round and now we've got one, two, three points of contact on the bar instead, which I think does the same thing that a batten would really. And it means that I haven't got to faff around with a batten that wants to spin and twist and do the wrong thing. The sun has come out. I cannot believe it. I do not remember the last time I saw the sun at the allotment. But the polytunnel is really starting to warm up. Maybe I should have bought a cold drink today instead of a nice hot tea, but it's looking pretty good. It's pretty level. And it, the easiest thing to do was just actually dissemble this, take the whole thing out, get all of these exactly the same amount of kind of twists and loops, and then I've put it in and it is level, which is quite nice. Oh my God, that is way too hot. Um, still forgetting what it's like to have a working thermos. I am desperate. I am absolutely desperate now to start sowing. I do have my seed box, don't I? Yes, I do. <laughs> Very good, <laughs> that would have been upsetting. But what I'm gonna do first is um, work on these sleepers which I don't really want to do, it's a bit boring. Um, and it's too wet to do it outside, which means I've got to do it in here. And you have to be quite careful inhaling the bitumen paint. I think it, it's rated fine. It's, you don't need a mask or anything like that unless you're doing it in a completely enclosed space. But I am going to open that other polytunnel door and get painting, I think. I don't want to do it partly because it's boring, but partly because once it's done, once it's dry, that means we're back working on the greenhouse, which... Uh, as you know, isn't my favorite job, but let's do it. <laughs> Just remembered a thought, I was halfway through filming that time lapse. And, do not get me wrong, I absolutely love my YouTube comments and I'm so lucky to have like a really nice community, like 99% of the time, comments are absolutely wonderful. But as soon as, soon as I finished ringing up this chain, I opened up my phone and <laughs> first comment that was on there was someone saying, JB, you can't put any weight on these crop bars. They're not designed for weight. It's just to strengthen the structure of the polytunnel. <laughs> and I went, oh no, I was like, that can't be right. You see, everyone's got floating tunnels. They're like really common. I would say floating tunnels. I mean, floating shells in your polytunnel. And um, thankfully, I Googled it. I went on the, the first tunnels website and it does say that they're, they're fine to support. It says hanging baskets and like crops and other things. It doesn't say that you can hang a whole scaffolding board and like loads of trays. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure, I, I think it's fine. I've got the weight as well. You'll see like right close to the bracket. So most of it is on this. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I think I'm sure it's fine. Everyone does it, don't they? It's fine. Don't worry about it, folks. It's fine. It's fine. It's going to be fine. <laughs> Genuinely though, I'm not too worried. I'm not too worried. those days folks one of those days where <laughs> I'm doing a lot of smiling I tell you I tell you I'm just really feeling it today these are big milestone jobs you know I was already happy with with getting this um this floating shelf in but now it's kind of upgraded it feels much more robust I'm about to start sewing <laughs> oh glee you know it's like it feels like the the end of the kind of building and the project phase is is nigh you know there's still flipping loads to do.
but I'm just so excited to, to start sowing some seeds. This stuff has gone on absolutely beautifully. I don't know why I've never used like the bituminous stuff before, I guess mostly because I've been a bit worried about the soil and chemical impacts and that kind of thing, but this, the, the greenhouses I've rebuilt it, it's all going to be paved. Nothing really in contact with the soil, so I just want to get as much um, peace of mind as, as I can possibly get with those. And it goes on so nice because it's so thick. Um, it's not like the Crea coat, which is much more runny. It kind of, it sprays everywhere. You have to be really careful. You have to put it on really slowly so you don't spray everything up your jeans or your t-shirt. <laughs> Although <laughs> I did uh, I did sit on this. I don't know if that came across in the time lapse. <laughs> so I got a nice big uh, splodge on my butt. Right, what I'm going to do, quick plan, I am desperately hoping that I've remembered plant labels. If I haven't remembered plant labels, then that's it. I give up. I'm giving up the allotment. I'm quitting YouTube. Someone else can have it all. <laughs> I'm done. It will be the final straw if I don't have <laughs> any plant labels. Oh, let me show you these as well. I tell you what, this is just crazy. How much do you reckon? Eight seed potatoes in here. I did get them from a garden centre. It's my own fault. <laughs> You know when you're just kind of going around, you put a few things in the trolley, in a basket, and it wasn't until I kind of got home. Well, I brought these up to the allotment and I got them out and put them in a little thing, as you do for chitting. And um, I went, hang on a minute, I think I might have been robbed. <laughs> it wasn't crazy, but this was like two pounds, two pounds fifty, I think. Um, I, I, I th I'm sure I used to get like a, about two or three kilos for, the, for that. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's just garden centres that are having a bit of a rip off year or if uh, there's something in the supply chain with seed potatoes this year. But um, I know you can get them cheaper. I was talking to someone very recently and they said you can still get them cheap, just maybe don't go to a garden centre. I have a notepad. The other Saturday I, uh, I made a little list with the help of Veg Plotter and uh, I don't really do, you know, what to sow in X month or what I'm sowing this week videos. They just don't really work for me. But if you are interested, I'm going to rattle off the list. And I'm not... <laughs> one of the reasons I don't really do how to or like, you know, when to sow what is because a lot of the time it's probably not good advice. <laughs> a lot of the time I just go off feeling. I do a lot of experimenting, sowing stuff at the wrong time. But today I'm finally going to start some broad beans. I want to do loads of salad crops, my lettuce. No, not too many. Trying to bear in mind successional sowing. Um, some spinach as well, although maybe a little bit late with that now. Um, I want to get some aubergines going. I've not got any aubergines, no heat loving crops. I think I'll probably get away with just putting some aubergine seeds in like a, a little, um, little three inch pot and the tunnel is warming up big time. I have as well today actually bought the old little Govi thermometer. This was so useful last year, um, really helps. And what I did is just the old flip the batteries trick. You know, you see, you see this all the time on like survival tips for, for torches. Um, just flip the batteries around, put them the wrong way. And then over winter, it's not gonna be burning all the battery when you're not using it. A lovely mild 19 degrees in the tunnel at the moment, apparently. Put this on the hotbed actually and see what it does. Let's, uh, let me do that. Just popped it on there with a little cardboard box on, on top to kind of cover it over. But yes, what was I saying? So aubergines, um, loads of cabbages I want to get on the go. This spring cabbage, oh, you know, four years of gardening. I can never remember spring, summer, summer, summer cabbages. It's time for summer cabbages, isn't it? You sow them in spring, you harvest in summer between July to October, hopefully, if they go right. This one is a, a golden acre, which I don't think I've ever actually grown before. I've tried before, but I mean, I've never actually successfully grown it. Maybe a little early for peas. Um, I want to get some spring onions on the go. Got my main onions, never did any spring onions. So, so poor. Um, beetroot and radish as well, classic. I'm actually pretty good at successional sowing of beets. It's the only thing I ever remember to successionally sow. And every year I say, this is going to be the year where I start successional sowing. Never is. It never is because there's always something, but we'll try, we'll try. And I've got a list of flowers as well. It's the year for flowers. And I'll do a bespoke video on the, the 10 flowers that I want to grow after our, um, we did a potty mouth flower special. I'll link that in the description if you've not seen it. It was really cool. Um, and Soph put together a list of the Allotment Newbie, brilliant channel linked in the description. She put together a list of 10 recommendations that I have to grow this year. I'll do a few more as well. But today I'm going to be doing sweet peas, snapdragons, antirhinums, uh, Cosmos, Sunflower and Scabious as well. Maybe a little early on some of them, um, but like I say, the tunnel is really starting to warm up. 20 degrees, I think a lot of stuff will germinate. I've got some on here that I think may be better for the propagator straw flower status. Pro 
probably not how you say that, and Phlox. Um, maybe, maybe I'll try. I'll see how I feel. I'll see if I get bored. I'll put those at the bottom of the priority list. And I've got Tachetes on here as well, which I forgot. But there we go. That's what I'm going to be doing. What I need to figure out now is where I'm actually going to sew this because uh, you know, everything's in flux. What I want to do when I've rebuilt the, the greenhouse is have that as kind of the dedicated sewing greenhouse. I've been looking at some slightly fancy greenhouse staging. We'll see, we'll see if the budget can stretch to it. But um, I like the idea of having just a pot, permanent potting bench in there where I do everything and then everything just kind of moves around the plot. I kind of had that in there last year and it was fantastic. I loved it. It was like the sewing greenhouse and I'm hoping I can, what I need to do, what I need to do, I'm telling myself the future JB, listen to me, leave it as a sewing greenhouse. Don't let the peppers take over because as soon as you let the peppers take over, that's it. All of the summer crops and summer sowings really fall by the wayside, I find. Wish me luck. I'm going to get sewing. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm <laughs> really, really, I cannot wait to finally get some stuff in the compost, in the soil. I'll be sowing everything straight into silver grow as well, of course. I've actually got goosebumps <laughs> excitement. It's so silly, isn't it? The good thing is I've got an audience that understands. <laughs> like you tell most people and they'd be like, wow, this guy's crazy. But um, I feel like if you're watching this video, you get it. You get it, don't you? Right, I'm going to get it all done. I'll show you everything. Le oh, I didn't check. Have I got labels? I think, I think they're in this impossible to open <laughs> metal box, which I <laughs> bloody hate. It's fantastic. In here, I put all of my, um, all of my peas and my beans and stuff like that. And oh, look, I oh, really need to go through this because it's mouse proof. But last year, <laughs> oh, this, oh, this is not good. Um, a, a selection of goodness knows what. Um, I think there's Kalima in here, some broad beans. I should go through these and get the broad beans out actually. Maybe I'll do that. There's peas as well. Basically, I just harvested a load of stuff. The, the one I really wanted to harvest was Kalima because it was so good and it's quite hard to get over here. It was just amazing. But the good news is, folks, plant labels. Yes, it's a good day. We're not quitting. Okay, I know I said I was going to get sewing. The rain is really coming down as well. I love it. I love being inside the polytunnel in the rain. It's so, so nice. But um, my curiosity couldn't take it. I had to go through this little bag of saved seeds. And I think what I've got over here is a mixture of Kalima bean, which look amazing. French beans are like exquisite. I think I've got <laughs> three pods of Borlotti beans. I'm not sure what has happened there or why I've only got three. I think I planted those on my auntie and uncle's plot last year and just kind of forgot about them. I think these are Christmas Lima bean that were sent. They were sent by Audrey. She's Real Food Comes Dirty on YouTube and she's on our podcast. And I think, oh, they're just exquisite. Look at those, absolutely gorgeous. So I've just pinged her a message on WhatsApp saying, do you think, is that, is that the Christmas lima bean? Uh, which I think is her favorite. And I've got as well, a load of just really quite foul looking um, dwarf broad beans, which, oh, okay, yeah. I think these are screwed. <laughs> There's something happened with these at the end of the season, the, the whole plant as well, not just the ones I took for seed. All of their pods kind of went black and I wasn't sure if they were just getting old or something like that, but look like maybe they should just be going in the bin. <laughs> They're very green. Um, and quite a few of them are, are quite black and mouldy looking. So that's a bit of a seed saving fail, but generally I do like saving seeds. You know, it's something I just, I like the concept of it. I like the self-sufficient nature, but most seeds <laughs> I find are way too fiddly. But these, because they're in nice big pods, I thought, oh, I'll save those. And they dry so readily, like on the plant, you know, you just leave them. And quite often with these, I missed a harvest and then they got too big and I thought, oh, I'll just pop them over to one side for harvesting and for keeping the seed. These ones though, they look really nice. They're quite dark, really satisfying to kind of push out of the pods as well. These were my outstanding crop of last year. The Kalima beans, they're just so, so sweet. And what I want to do this year is harvest loads more, save absolutely hundreds and maybe do like a giveaway or give away some to my patrons if I've only got a few or something like that, because these are, I think, quite hard to get in this country and you have to try them. I'm like evangelical. It's first like French beans I'd ever grown really. And they were exquisite. So, so sweet and fresh and oh, 
just lovely. Right, so I'm just going to put these in little bags and then I will actually start sewing some. <laughs> ah, there's always a distraction, isn't there? I love it though. Like I say, one of those days where I can't stop smiling. I do hope they are Christmas lima beans. Audrey said that they're one of her favourites, but she only sent through a few seeds and I only really had one plant that kind of took off last year. So I saved it. I thought, oh, well, next year. We'll, we'll save all the seeds and we'll have a proper harvest next year for eating. Now that was good for the soul. <laughs> I'm feeling amazing, completely at peace with the world. I am slightly out of practice though, and I've lost the speed sewing knack. Do you remember last year, sort of, definitely by May, I was like, right, let's bloody sew it. And like, I get a tray and then like, about five minutes later, everything would be labeled, sewed, done. And it was like, you know, getting pretty quick. And uh, today I've just been in like relax mode. I've just been so laid back and chilled, which is obviously great, but it does mean I've run out of time. The sun is setting. I can't feel my hands anymore. As soon as the sun set, oh, the temperature has dropped right down. Let me check the thermometer. Now, yes, I put this just on the hotbed and to be honest, it's not great. It's a cool 11 degrees, nearly 12. Um, but it, it did feel warmer under there than it is out here. So I'm gonna leave this in the polytunnel just for a minute and we'll see whether or not there's really a noticeable difference under there. I have not sowed my tomatoes today, but I have sowed loads of other stuff. So let me put you on the gimbal and show you around. Oh, it's so, it's just so, 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 so good to have things sown. And I cannot wait to see those first little green shoots poking up through the compost. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. It really is so good. So first tray, salads. It's just pure salads, this one. Just a mix, two lines each. We've got Red Bull, Webb's Wonderful, Saladin, which is an iceberg, and some Medania spinach as well, which, uh, I don't know, I think that seed is like pretty ancient. I did have this ready, this was my tomatoes, but uh, I think I'm gonna do those later. And as well, I'm gonna use one of these self-watering root trainers. If you've not seen them, they're not uh, root trainers actually, they're just seed cells, but um, I'll put a link in the description if you wanna check those out on Grown Local. They were kindly sent to me for free. And I think that self-watering system will be really, it's just a simple little wicking mat, but I think that'll be really good for tomatoes, which are quite thirsty. And I can be a little bit forgetful, you know, at times it's nice to have a little backup reservoir. These ones, just the brassicas, another full tray. We've got some scarlet kale, some Amara uh, Ethiopian kale again, which I tried to grow last year and unfortunately I killed because, <laughs> I don't know, I had a little vacant period. I can't, I can't remember exactly what happened, but a lot of things did die at one point last year. I think it was a hay fever. We've got some golden acre cabbage and some mini coal cabbage. One should be ready to harvest around August, hopefully. And the mini coal looks really interesting, actually. I've not grown that before. It looks super compact and that's a bit of a slower grower. So that should be September, October. But I have for once actually planned out my cabbage harvest, which is nice. In here, this is one of the self-watering root trainers and I can show you actually. If I left that up, you can hopefully see down there, there's just a little mat and that corner folds over and then you dip that into a little reservoir at the bottom. So when you water, it's just gonna be readily available to the seedlings. And this is Musselburgh leeks. The earliest I have ever sown leeks. I'm normally very late. I do a kind of April sowing and then I get them out kind of in the height of summer. They do okay, but you've seen it, I normally have very small, small leeks. So I'm giving it a bit more of a concerted effort this year. And leeks are one that I am famously forgetful of. Like it's the thing I neglect the most in the garden, which is why they're into self-watering. This one is just a half tray of spring onions. So I'm going to get those up and then a bit of successional sowing. I should say as well, a lot of these I've left uh, so this cabbage one, I, I don't know if it's the most efficient way of doing it, but it's just what, <laughs> look at my hands, absolutely filthy. It's just uh, what I like to do. I've gone, I've done kind of, yeah, so this golden acre, that's got a row and then I've left the rest dibbed. So where there's dibbing holes, that is a signal to myself to, uh, you know, remember that they're for succession sowing. And I'll do those maybe in, in a month or so probably, or I'll probably just forget realistically, but hey ho, it's, uh, you know, the thought is there, and you can see I've done the same with the, the white Lisbon there. Just dip the holes out. It's a nice, really easy way to just look and go like, oh yeah, it's not that nothing's germinated. It's just that I've not sown anything. And the last tray that I've got done was this tray of flowers. And there, there is loads in here. And once again, probably not very efficient way of doing things, but 
it's a it's a go i've tried to keep it like super compact i've got eight flower varieties here the wormwood doesn't really count that's not not one of the flowers but we've got peach melba and nasturtium the wormwood the um absinthia quite exciting i've got some apricot cosmos some sulfur cosmos risking it a bit with the cosmos to be honest but worth a go isn't it we'll see what happens some black knight scabious which i'm very excited about i really love that classic tagetes i've got some nemesia as well maybe a little bit bold and colorful for me we'll, we'll see and we've got some cowslips which i've tried to grow for years and years and, and never really established all there is as well down here my little miniature beetroot tray i don't know why i like using this for beetroot but i do and i i just it, it's really convenient i like to sow them in this once again dibbed a load out as a reminder for successional sowing so that's about six trays give or take veg and flowers in about i don't know maybe three or four hours probably the slowest work i've ever done on the allotment but I've had a fantastic time. A lot of it was kind of planning, thinking, what am I going to sow? You know, I hadn't put down any varieties or anything like that on the plan, and I'm pretty happy. I do want to do the tomatoes and aubergines quite soon. Sooner, Ooh, look at the thermometer. That is eight degrees and falling. Um, and obviously it is getting slightly cooler now, but that does really kind of surprise me actually. Well, maybe not surprise me, but the fact that that's a good kind of three, four degrees warmer on the hotbed is a really, really good sign, especially just, you know, if we're just talking about keeping things just frost free, you know, and maybe up to kind of four or five degrees Celsius. Not ideal for a tomato, but I don't have any more space to grow at home. <laughs> just would kill me if I tried to start my tomatoes at home. And I always just find that tomatoes quite like being started outdoors and getting a bit hardier. So that's my opinion. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see, won't we? I am so cold. I am actually freezing and I need to do one more coat of paint on those sleepers before I leave. So let's leave it there, shall we? An extra special thank you to all of my Chili Pepper tier patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Mel, Michael, Denise, Socks in the Garden, Sarah and Andrew. That was the quickest I've ever done it. Was it right? I hope, I hope so. I think it was. But I just uh, the support of the patrons means so much. It's like today, I just popped out to Wix. I got the paint for the sleepers. I got the chains. You know, it's just the weight of your mind, like sometimes not having to worry about the budget all the patreon money just goes in a, an allotment account basically and it makes my life so much easier so thank you so much to all of my patrons but thank you to everyone for watching hopefully i'll see you again in the next one